into have to use the registration to trace the owner.
think this is going to help us. Stealing the wheels is for amateurs. A car ring would have stripped it in a warehouse. It's owned by the Argentinian Embassy. Taking the flag as a souvenir can't have any street value. Look at the look at the thing, Cole. Combination wrench. Use it to remove the wheel lugs. Why would you just bounce? Oswald Jacobs? That's right. What exactly happened here, Mr. Jacobs? Last night, I was looking out of my window. I like to keep an eye on what's going on. I can understand that. You see this empty lot? Damn kids play stickball here. Always breaking my windows. Always asking for their ball back. Can we get back to the car, Mr. Jacobs? Don't be impatient, Sonny. Anyway. 
last night I see this brand spanking new Packard up on bricks. Did you see who stole the Packard? Hell yes, I did. I saw three goddamn Mexicans going to work on it. Can you tell us what they were doing? Using the headlights of an old Ford so they could strip the thing. I yelled out to them, I'll call the cops. So they loaded up their car and drove off, tooting and hollering and yelling obscenities at me in Mexican. You speak Spanish, sir? No, I do not. After the uh, Mexicans left, you didn't go anywhere near the car? After I scared them off? No, I didn't go anywhere near that car. <laughs> How do you know there were three of them? It was dark. It must be 50 feet from the kitchen to the car. You telling me I'm lying? I made a mistake. You went out to the car. Once they were gone, you had to take a look for yourself. I was curious. Ain't no law against that. So what if I took a look around that car? You can't be accusing me of nothing. Tell me about the car they were driving. It was an old Ford. I didn't catch the license number. You look like the kind of guy who notices details. You're right there. The car was old, but it looked brand new. Candy apple red pink job stands out a mile. <laughs> What exactly did you see them take? They was working on the tires. That's all that was took. <laughs> right. So what did you take, Jacobs? Do you want my partner to pat you down? I found a notebook in the glove compartment. I was going to show you. It's on the chair on my porch. Thank you for your help, Mr. Jacobs. You can speak to Officer Thibault about signing a formal statement. When you get the car out of the way, maybe you could come back and do something about those kids. How about we bring you an umpire's mask?
Okay, so we have the owner of the <coughs> a degenerate. I'll run John Madsen by R and I. Contact details on a William Dewey. This looks like business rather than pleasure. <laughs> I think we've rung this place dry. Let's find a game well. I, I was. A you coming? I need a game well, Phelps. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How could I help, Detective? Could you run the name Dewey Brothers? Possibly a dealership or car mechanics workshop. One moment. Dewey Brothers Packard Dealership, 629 Figueroa oh. Street. Got it. Can you put me through to Michigan 2458, please? LAPD, ma'am. Can I speak to John Madsen, please? He's that school officer. Uh, what's this about? Is he in trouble? How old is your boy, ma'am? Just turned 16. Wrong person, Mrs. Madsen. Sorry to disturb you. Any messages? There's just one message for you, Detective. A four-door Packard diplomatic license number, Paul Robert. 706 was reported missing this morning by Juan Francisco Valdez. Could you have him brought in? He's already here at Central Detective. He's demanding an audience, as he calls it. Thanks. Can you get a message to Captain Leary? Tell him we'll be in as soon as we can. Thanks. Can you cordon off this lot until we have the vehicle impounded? Yes, sir, Detective. We'll follow up on the owner. Get a statement from Jacobs, and I'll read your report back at the station. We can visit the Packard dealership or head back to Central and interview this Valdez character. Your call. You can just drive. Awful. Just awful. Why can't we get any closer? This has got to be the 50th abandoned vehicle call we've got this year. One more and I'm going to go crazy. Not your favorite cases? You kidding me? This is barely even police work. Of all the bad guys in this city, we get lumped with the ones who can't even be bothered to keep what they steal. Don't tell me, let me guess. You were making your way past the lot, caught sight of the new model four-door, and couldn't help yourself. You could see yourself in that car and just had to take a closer look. Well, I can't say as I blame you. <laughs> LAPD, Mac. We'd like to speak with the owner. That's me, William Dewey, proprietor at your service. We're investigating the theft of a Packard belonging to the Argentine Embassy. Are you missing a combination wrench? I don't know, detective, but I know how we can find out. Follow me.
We keep all our tools in here. Mind if we look around? Be my guest. You sure you guys aren't interested in a new car? Huh? Maybe a used car. I have some nice used cars for guys in your wage bracket. Why don't you give us some alone time, Dewey? Go sell some cars or whatever it is that you do here. That's not right. One left. Wrong size. Gabriel Delgado is missing a three-quarter. Seems irrelevant. Good to me. No good. We need diplomatic. Circumstantial. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. Packards are great cars. But this doesn't look like the kind of place favored by foreign embassies. How do you know Valdez? I don't know Valdez. The embassy bought the car. All I know is he must know a quality car when he sees one. What's the angle with Valdez? The embassy bought the car. When it comes in for service, Valdez picks it up. That's it. Where can we find Delgado? I don't know. Sure as hell isn't here. Just... 
You're lying. You've got him holed up somewhere. I'm having nothing to do with that, kid. You can't prove any different. Don't ask, you never find out. Wait, is Valdez already at? Address, Dewey. Or my partner shoves her head in a car door. Okay, all right. Apartment 3, 103 Hill Street. And tell him from me. If he ever shows his face around here again, I'm going to kick his butt from here to kingdom come. A wrench from this dealership was used to strip the wheels from a Packard last night, Mr. Dewey. A couple of Hispanics were seen taking parts. We've had a spate of thefts ourselves. Comes with the location. Even bastards to steal anything the minute your back is turned. What are you hiding, Dewey? Spill it. You don't want the LAPD getting too interested in this place. So I hire a few illegals. It's cheaper than hiring returning GIs, and they have less attitude. Downside is, they're a little light-fingered. Thank you for your help, Mr. Dewey. No problem. God damn that kid. I'm just an honest car salesman. Seems like you just don't know who you can trust these days. Go into movies, Dewey. You're missing your calling. Time to visit Gabriel Delgado. See how good his excuse is. You're behind the wheel. You read the story in the Examiner about the Navy developing three-dimensional movies? What's a dimension? You know, like a graph. Vertical axis is Y and horizontal is X. Well, that's clear as mud. Third dimension would be Z. So things would be popping out of the screen. That's ridiculous. Scare people out of the theater. God's name would want that. I don't know. People scoff at the idea of talking in color. Look what we have now. Okay, let's see what Gabriel has to say for himself. I just hope our Archangel hasn't already flown. Isn't that the cop who solved the big case and got promoted?
Sam is taking what the hell, hell is this guy this doing? Here he is, apartment three. Yes? LAPD, ma'am. We're looking for Gabriel Delgado. Gabriel? We're from the police. Policia, you understand? Yes, I understand. Could you come inside? What is your name? Ana Rodriguez. Is Gabriel Delgado here, Ms. Rodriguez? No. What do you want with Gabriel? Is he in trouble? Stay where you are, Ms. Rodriguez. We need to take a look around. But he is not here. I have told you. Check out the surrounds. I'll stay with the broad. So how far along are you, Anna? Nearly 20 weeks. Right. So how's it going to be when you go into labor and he's not around? You are wrong about Gabriel. He will be a good father. Not sure this means much. Already he worked hard to provide for us. Unless you help us here, Anna, your little one won't be seeing Papa for a very long time. Don't think this is anything. Doesn't look like anything. to tell whether it's the suspect vehicle from the scene. <laughs> Certainly Gabriel's pride and joy. Serving breakfast for two, Anna? You should have cleared up. Diplomatic license plates. Hmm. 
don't think this is any use to us. Take a smarter man than me to connect that. It looks like Valdez gets his wheel back. given me anything to go on. Souvenirs are a dumb move. You're in serious right. <laughs> trouble, Miss Rodriguez. But Gabriel is not here. I have done nothing wrong. Tell us the truth, Anna. Has Gabriel been here? I haven't seen him for at least three nights. What do you want? You keep lying to me, and I'll send you and your baby to jail. He lives here, but he hasn't come home. I swear it. Enough, Anna. There are signs all over this place that he's been back. He was here last night. I have never seen him so angry. He went out to his shed and put some things in it. I don't know what and I don't want to know. I love him. Actually, I don't. Why did he steal the car, Anna? The customer insulted him. He has his honor, no?
Gabriel's been in trouble before. He left you here alone to answer for him, and you expect me to believe that his motive was honor? Please don't yell at me. I've done nothing wrong. Actually. We found a license plate matching our stolen vehicle in the shed. Add in the assortment of parts, and we can make Gabriel for a dozen other thefts. It's time to get serious, Anna. You must ask these questions of Gabriel. I know nothing of these car parts. lying, Anna. I think you're a willing accomplice in these robberies. What proof do you have that I stole the cars? You come into my house to insult and bully me? I have known many policia like you. Gabriel wasn't at work. Where can we find him? He said he would never go back. Gabriel is out driving around in his car. Can you tell us where he is? I will try and bring him in. If we have to track him down ourselves, it could end very badly for him, Miss Rodriguez. He is out with his chivatos, Julian and Enrique. They race on the corner of First and Santa Fe. I have pleaded with Gabriel to stop, but he would not listen. As soon as we corner Gabriel, we'll be back for you, Anna. You had your chance to cooperate. We know where the kid is. Let's go stop these clowns and get them off the street. Isn't that the cop who solved the big case and got promoted? You know the way, you can drive. Do we have a Juan Francisco Valdez in for questioning? Sure do, Phelps. Your bird's an interview, too. And get this, he's wearing gloves and doing his best not to touch anything. Can you beat that? <laughs> Sounds like we don't want to keep this guy waiting. It's this way. I'm thinking of moving up to a 45. I want to stop him with one round. How long is this going to take? Tell a man that there are 400 billion... About time. Are you the senior you officer I requested? Area? I'm Detective Phelps, and this is Detective Bukowski. Have you any idea how long I've been waiting to speak with you? I am needed back at the consulate, and you keep me here like a common criminal. All right, friend. Let's take a deep breath and start all over again. Mr. Baldez. Counsel General, I insist on my full title. Where did you purchase the car? My secretary and driver arranged the purchase. A disreputable place, a Dewey Brothers by name. As soon as I can have it arranged, I will have my Hispano Suiza brought up from Buenos Aires.
bought a Packard by Les? A snob like you doesn't drive an American car. I want answers or I'll smack you around the teeth. William Dewey offered me a substantial bribe to make a purchase at his establishment. It is not unusual to make this kind of transaction in the civil service. Don't tell that to the Argentine taxpayers. Consul General, we have located your car. Can you tell us how it was stolen? It must have been stolen from the consul garage. Terribly inconvenient, of course. I want the perpetrator soundly flogged. Unfortunately, we don't do that here, Your Worship. with the note. You have a pretty good idea who stole the car, don't you, Consul General? Are you going to tell me, or do I shake it out of you? There's no call for violence. I suspect a disgruntled boy from the car dealership. You have a name for this kid? Gabriel, like the Archangel. I have no surname. So tell us about this kid, Gabriel. You had a run-in with him? Mecanico. A presumptuous young man who did not know his place. He presumed to ask me questions. But we do a lot of presuming here in the United States, Consul General. It comes with the turf. Attention! You fuck young boys, Valdez. Are you a madman? <laughs> this will cause an international <laughs> incident. I will. Danny, Ben, Miguel, Tristan, and Teddy. <laughs> Full lips. Ring any bells? I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. Gabriel, spill it. A beautiful but impertinent boy. I mentioned rendezvous and the young man went quite insane. I thought he was going to kill me. I was prepared to pay. We'll be in touch, Consul General. So, you're gonna see your married man again? Gentlemen, your duty is simple. Return my automobile and thrash the perpetrator. <laughs> they weren't even his prints and he still confessed. Someone Finished with Valdez. Thank on. God. I'll get rid of him. In a couple of hours. Mary says he'll sin, but only if I guarantee he walks. I got the beauty again. She wants a five star. That's the guy. I heard he's an honest cop. Now there's an oxymoron for you. Extra read all about it. Can you drive to this one? What kind of man leaves his pregnant girlfriend at home while he goes off to play cars? Pregnant girlfriends aren't always a barrel of laughs. Everyone needs to let off a little steam. Some guys wouldn't come back home at all. Are you talking from experience? There's 
the red Ford. That's Delgado right there. Quick! They're getting away! Phelps, 1247. Requesting assistance at first at Santa Fe. Reports of an illegal street. Stay on Delgado. He's getting away. I'm gonna find you! Gonna lose him! Quick as we shut one of these races down, another one springs up somewhere else. The kids used to steal cars to sell them. Now they just want to wrap them around a lamp post. The next 16-year-old I have to peel off the sidewalk, you're calling me. I've had enough of those to last me a lifetime. Lay into his wheel arches. Delgado is our boy. Forget the others. Delgado, you're under arrest for Grand Theft Auto. Fuck you, puto! You should speak to the maricón! Valdez, I showed him! Now who's a man? I should've burned his fucking car! You got a foreign dignitary outed as a fruit and a kitty raper, a car dealer we're gonna let slide for the kickbacks, and a street punk car thief who sure as hell won't be taking liberties with other people's autos again anytime soon. That Detective Phelps you didn't is see that, not did a you? bad haul. You keep your chin low and your hands high, and you keep bringing me clearances just like that one. That's textbook policing, and we need more of it in this department. You have any plans for weekend liberty, Jack? My sisters have been working in Los Angeles in a bomber factory. They're coming down to visit. I'm meeting them at the station at 6. Good for you, Jack. Are they cute? They're my sisters, Hank. Attention! Final inspection before liberty. Good job, Kelso. Are we going somewhere, gentlemen? Full inspection. It had better be exceptional if any of you want liberty this weekend. Kelso, this carbine. The four is dirty. No, it isn't. Are you arguing with me, Kelso? Do what you need to do, Sergeant. You know the boar's immaculate. Weekend liberty canceled. Uh, Two-day oh, field drill. Man. Clean this rifle. No. Do you know the penalty for insubordination, Kelso? Jack, don't do it. Forget him, Hank. He doesn't have what it takes. Are you two finished? 
Are you going to clean this rifle? No, Sergeant. Cole is right. I'm going to stop playing games and join a rifle company and fight the real enemy. Gentlemen, I just got this handed to me. A hit and run felony at Ray's Cafe, 208 North Los Angeles. Got a patrolman on site. The coroner's on his way. Get down there, see if you can find any witnesses who can put a make on the car. I say we bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. Straight through the red light. Said she never saw it. I didn't come to California to be a secretary. The cop from the newspaper. I say we bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. The coroner says it's going to take at least a week to get an ID. I don't want to be rude, but I ain't got time for talking. Those white boys get any on the side? charges. Anna Rodriguez might do time. I'll speak to the DA. Yourself. I don't know, Cole. She's an easy make and the DA likes convictions. I'll convince him to let him go. <laughs> How you do that? I'll give him something better. Detectives, over here. Cole Phelps, traffic. What have we got? Dick is a white male, name of Lester Patterson. Walked out of the bar and into the street. Car hit over there and he ended up here. Dead on impact by the look of it. Have you canvassed the area? The only one with anything useful to contribute is a young lady over there. She lives above the bar, name of Shannon Perry. No, it's not a stage name. 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the Yellow Brick Road. Is that so? We'll take a formal statement later. Right now, we're going to take a look around. Well, landed on his face and ended up here. The car must have struck him from behind. Find next of kin. What have you got?
got on the victim? From all reports, he was intoxicated at the time of the accident. I'll know how intoxicated once I'd done the autopsy. Looking him over now, I'd say he died on impact. What about the chest wound? Isn't that inconsistent? Very common in auto injuries. Look for a car with a prominent hood ornament. Those things are killers. Body traveled a good 20 feet. This blood is a long way from the body. The car must have been going like a bat out of hell. driver managed to brake before the impact. Careful where you step in, Phelps. I don't come down to the station house and tap dance on your desk. Help me out. Witness statements next. We know we've got the girl as an eyeball, but we should check the bar as well. I'm Detective Phelps of the LAPD. How can I help, Detective? Your name would be a good start. Dudley Lynch. Hired help. I run the place when the owner ain't around. Where is the owner? He stepped out. Somebody had to take Lorna out. Mrs. Patterson home. What can you tell me about the accident? Not a lot. It was busy in here, and all I heard was the impact. So what was he doing outside? It's against licensing regulations to drink on the sidewalk. Mr. and Lorna were having a fight. The owner made him take it outside. It was pretty ugly. Do you know the victim? Yeah. Lester Patterson. He's a regular here, or he was. Not one of your favorite customers? Lester was special, but not my kind of special. Was Lester drinking alone? No. He came here with his wife. She didn't seem too interested in the booze, though. If olive oil comes from olives, where's baby oil come from? was not one of the things I wanted to be when I grew up. We'll need to check that. Courtney, come in. Have a seat. Thanks, Doc. How are you finding working at the clinic? honest with you, Doctor? I would hope so, Courtney. I was hoping that the therapy would be more beneficial. Treatment can unfortunately be very long-term. So many of the patients here are addicts, Doctor. Many of them have been for years, Courtney. In the past, these people were condemned for sanatoriums. We can reveal the root of the problem. Then we have a chance to help them. And until then, they stayed sedated? Do I detect a hint of reproach, Courtney? I was expecting more, Doctor. I'm sorry. I don't mean to criticize. 
part of being a physician, Cordy. Learning to be patient. How is it possible to keep so many of them on their medications, Doctor? Many of their addictions are illegal. Oh, many things in life are gray, Cordy. What may on the surface appear to be illegal is actually a benefit to society at large. It's all yours, Detective. Miss Perry? Yes? I'm Detective Phelps. This is my partner, Detective Bukowski. Can you tell us what happened? Well, I came to the window because I heard people arguing downstairs. Car hit that poor man and knock him down the street. What kind of car was it? A dark red Lincoln Continental. Did you see the license plate? Only the first three letters, I'm afraid. Three C eight. Tell me more about the argument you heard. Well, there were two voices. A man and a woman. That's all. Why are you holding out on us, Miss Perry? I'm sorry. I was hoping to tell my story to the newspapers. I'd like to get my it. picture in the paper. I'm trying to find work as an actress, and things are pretty difficult. Cough it up, sister. We don't have all night. People arguing? They were husband and wife. I could tell by what she was yelling. Intimate things. Very embarrassing for the man. Thank you, Miss Perry. Your information has been very helpful. You can go now. You really think so? I hope you find that driver and put him away. You certainly got away with the dames, Phelps. <laughs> Give it a rest, Bukowski. Let's see what the patrons have to say. A witness overheard an argument. Lester and Lorna, there's nothing like airing your dirty laundry in public, is there? Why was Lorna Patterson in such a hurry to leave? What is going on here? Lorna was pretty upset, so Leroy took her home. Lorna and Leroy are close. They've been talking about opening a new bar. Leroy? Leroy Sabo, the owner. How long have Lorna and Leroy been talking about this new bar? Who knows? I just served the drinks. Bartenders hear all sorts of things. 
Are you going to tell me, or do we have to start playing rough? When Lester was drinking, he treated Lorna like dirt. He gambled away all their money. Lorna pitched Leroy about the bar. I don't know how interested he is. Is Leroy doing well? <laughs> Hell no. The only thing keeping this place afloat are the poker games. Thanks for your help, Lynch. I'm going to need you to sign a statement with the patrolman. Sure, no problem. You get anything out of the regulars? They weren't giving too much away. They liked watching Lester and Lorna go a few rounds every other day. And Lester was a fan of the love tap. Polar guy. Knife covered in blood. Could be a steak knife. This is a hit and run case, Phelps. Anyone could have thrown away a kitchen knife. In any case, we'll want tech services to scrub the alleyway before they bag the knife. This is when you marry a girl for love and you find out later she's got money. Two peanuts are walking down the street. One was assaulted. If you were twice as smart, you'd still be stupid. Got to be something big, Phelps right? badge, 1247. How can I help, Detective? I need to run a partial license plate, 3 Charles 8. Cross-check possible Lincoln owners. Suspect vehicle is a red Lincoln Continental. Just a moment, Detective. Only one possible make on that license. Registered to a William Shelton, 738 West Temple Street. Thanks for your help. It's like we caught a break on this one. Why is the word abbreviation so long? What are we waiting for?
You all seem to be standing around. Shouldn't you you drive. Working? I need to go over the case notes. right there. William Shelton? Yes. It doesn't look good, Shelton. You packing your bags and making a run for it? You know why we're here. Yes. The accident. We've got witnesses who can put this car at the scene, not to mention the physical damage. This is open and shut, Shelton. That coward thinks he can run from everything. Games, Phelps, take this guy out. No wonder he killed someone driving like this. Lay into his wheel, Archie. Come on. Don't let that asshole get away. Go on, get after it! Hold it right there, Sheldon! Hurry, you can still catch them! All right, I give up. Here. How does a vehicular manslaughter rap sound, Sheldon? I hit him. I admit it. I just panicked, but it wasn't my fault. What do you mean? The guy jumped right out in front of me. He came out of nowhere. There's nothing I could do about it. Why didn't you stop? I've had accidents before. That's it. We're done here. The DA is going to love you. They weren't all my fault. I'm a surveyor. I need my license for my job. There were people around. A woman and a man were standing right next to him. I thought they could get him to a hospital. I'm telling you, it's not my fault. The guy is dead, Shelton. You can't be serious. William Shelton, you're coming downtown. We need to talk about a manslaughter charge. Leave the coroner and the paperwork. Procedure can wait. We should probably go speak to the wife and let her know what's happening. Okay. You become all hard at the prospect of paperwork, don't you? You can drive. So the wife was there when it happened, but then left the scene. You're right. That's pretty unusual behavior. She could be in shock. I saw some people do some strange things in the war after the wife's death. Maybe. Maybe she doesn't give a fuck. According to the patrons, her old man was a piece of work. You don't think, Phelps, the guy was run over. So it worked out well for this broad. So what? 
Maybe she deserved to catch a break. I don't know. Yes? Hello? This is Patterson. Is this about my husband? We're investigating the incident, ma'am. I see. Come in, won't you? Can you tell me what happened? What's to tell? He got hit by a car and now he's dead. You don't appear to be too upset about the fact. Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stick it out this long. What's that supposed to mean, mister? I think it's about time you left. I have someone here, I beg I... your pardon? You're gonna have to run that one by us again, sister. It's okay, Lorna. I'm Leroy Sabo. Well, well. Nice to see you're comforting the grieving widow, Mr. Sabo. All right, wise guy. Do you have any intelligent questions you would like me to answer? You can confirm Mrs. Patterson's story. Lester lost at cards. Hey. He was kind of hard to control when he lost his temper. He turned without looking and walked right out in front of the car. It wasn't good. What's your relationship with Mrs. Patterson, Mr. Sabo? We're friends, good friends. You expect me to believe that? Look, I was filing for divorce. Mental cruelty. Lester could be a mean son of a bitch. And Lester knew about that? No. I hadn't told him. Well, hasn't this worked out well for the two of you? I feel almost bad for busting in on this little rendezvous. How did the car come to hit Lester? He walked straight into the path of an oncoming car. You expect me to believe that, Lorna. It's all very convenient. Gambling for Lester was like the needle for a hophead. He was yelling at me. He was yelling at the whole world. I kind of felt sorry for the driver. Poor guy had no chance. You were arguing in the bar and on the sidewalk? We were always arguing. So what? You think I got nothing better to do? Beat it. Admit it. You were baiting him, pushing his buttons. We can easily get the full story from the regulars in the bar. All right. Lester was playing cards out back. He lost, of course, and wanted back in. He suggested I earn the money on my back to get a mistake. That was the proposition he was putting to his so-called buddies. So maybe I was a little angrier than usual. Let's just say I took exception to his idea. The bartender said that you and Leroy were planning to go into business together. Can you explain how you'll get the money to do that? I have a little money saved away. being economical with the truth, Lorna. You want to back that up, little man? 
you increase the premium on Lester's life insurance, GI insurance policies have a $10,000 payout. It was Leroy's idea. Lester lived on the edge. He was always getting into fights, craft games, peanut gull, you name it. Turns out it was good advice. It speaks to motive and premeditation, Lorna. You're forgetting the hit and run detective. You and Mr. Sabo have an interesting day. I'm sure we will, officer. Now, if you could both just leave. We're leaving, ma'am. Sorry for your loss. I can see what a tough time you're having with all this. Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, Detective? Messages, please. Just one detective from the coroner. Message reads, Phelps, see me at Central Morgue immediately. Results of the Patterson autopsy. Thanks, ma'am. Hey, that's that cop. Seems like a decent guy. Can you drive to this one? We can put the driver in front of a judge in less than a week. You'd be making a big mistake. Run that by me again? The victim was dead before the car hit him. Two puncture wounds to the right side of the thorax. Second puncture reached his heart. You're kidding me. Been doing this job 23 years, son. No one's ever laughed at one of my jokes. He was stabbed to death? Long, sharp knife. Length of a bayonet. We found a knife in the alleyway. Where is it now? Was it bagged? By Patrolman Kaplan. Perfect. I'll get you a definite match. Jesus, we got him. Murder one. We were right there, and they tried to stare us down. Now they'll both get the gas chamber. We have the knife, we have the coroner's report, and I bet we could roll Sabo as a witness. Let's bring her in. Not on your life, Buster. We might get there quicker if you use the siren. right when you can.
Next left. Jesus, Cole! Are you on the dark or what? spoken to the coroner, Mrs. Patterson. He confirmed your husband's cause of death. We'd like you to come downtown and answer some questions. It wasn't me. It was Leroy's idea. Leroy stabbed him. I had nothing to do with it. Where is Leroy now? He's in the bedroom. You're very good, Lorna. Put the gun down, Leroy. If you do something stupid now, you don't stand a chance in front of the grand I see you to give me up, sweetheart. Oh, they're whispering in my ear, telling me how we had to get rid of them, how good it could be, all the money we could claim, all that planning, how to get him into the street, how to make it look like an accident. For God's sake, you Leroy, all shut the up. You is covered, baby. I have nothing to do you with it. You think I'm going to fry for you, He's Lorna? He's a crazy man. Shoot him. Shoot him, for God's sake. It's too late, Sabo. Are we going to make a bargain or what? Put the weapon down now. Have it your Spoken to the coroner, Mrs. Patterson. It's too late, Sabo. any closer and I will pull the trigger. How long do you think you can hold out? You want to back off right now. You want me to on you? Help me! You look spooked, Phelps. I thought you'd been under fire before. It never gets any easier, Bukowski. So, I give you a hit and run, you bring me back fraud, conspiracy, and first degree murder. This is how a good detective operates, Phelps. You take nothing at face value. You keep digging and asking questions until you get to the truth. You got some sharp elbows on you, detective. I like that. Keep up the good work.
Phelps, Bukowski. B-Cop says he located a green Kaiser Fraser from the hot sheet. Address is 6 West 2nd Street. Get over there and see what you can find out. Go on. Sorry to inconvenience you. We're on it, Captain. Okay, keep moving, lover boy. I swear, the more vent cars we bring in, the longer the hot sheet gets. It pays the rent, though. It keeps Mrs. Phelps in the manner to which she's accustomed. I'm not sure she'd agree with you. Passionate, romantic type like you, Cole? I don't believe a word of it. You got any hungry or something? I can't go back to sleep. The early bird gets the worm. It's like a mouse. for the pedestrians. They're calling her the Dahlia now. I wonder what Veronica Lake thinks of that one. What a case. You hear whether they're making any progress? Well, Captain Donnelly seems to think they have it all wrapped up. Brown and Green are sweating this manly character. I heard it'll be in front of a grand jury by next week. Poor thing. Terrible enough being murdered like that without having to all over the front. Now look what you've done! Just pulling out of the drive. Get him. Remember, we need him healthy enough to answer questions. 1247, Detective Phelps requesting immediate backup in pursuit of a stolen green Kaiser Fraser from 6 West 2nd Street. Come on! Enough games, Phelps. Take this guy Wait. out. All right, all right. Maybe I was a couple miles over the speed limit. Get break Put your hands where I can see them. I'll call it in. Why did you run from us? I saw a big car in my rearview mirror with two tough guys bearing down on me. What would you do? What's your name? Cliff Harrison. You're under arrest. For what? What are you talking about? Nice try. I'm talking about the car being stolen. You're out of your mind. I bought the car, and I've got the paperwork to prove it. Looks like we'll have some questions for the people at Coombs Automotive. So you chase me around the streets and then you don't even tell me why? 